I'm going to introduce you uh, uh, not our next speaker. Um, he's currently working as application security engineer at Globo.com, which is a, a news media and TV network from Brazil. Uh, he has a OSCP and OSC certifications, jumped into software engineering to help develop teams improve the quality of their code uh, by finding vulnerabilities as soon as possible. He is very interested in development, uh, exploit development, and building security tools to automate the process of uh, security issues during the SDLC or CI CD you choose. Uh, his presentation is going to be about Husky CI, finding security flaws in, in CI before deploying them. Uh, give a round of applause to Rafael Santos. Hello. Well, Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. It's first time here speaking in Vegas. So today I'm going to talk uh, and present a tool that I have been working on with my security team. And it's called Husky CI. So uh, who, am, who I am? I, I have already been presented. But uh, as a Brazilian, I play a lot, of, a lot of soccer. And when I play soccer, I, I usually play as a left winger. And, as a, and I, for a, 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 a uh, last year, I, I, I was working a lot in the pen testing field, and this is something that I did, some cert certifications in this field. And currently, I'm working as a security engineer at Global.com, and Global.com is the largest media company in Brazil and in, in, in Latin America. We, it's, 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 it's actually a TV channel. We host some, some famous shows like Big Brother Brazil and The Voice Brazil. And, and my passion is about writing security tools and trying to understand how the development how the process of exploit development is, and this is some of my passions. So today I'm going to talk about a, a story and about a day in the life of a development team. So uh, let's imagine that there is this development team that that they are have their project, they have that they they have that repository that is hosting in the in GitLab. And they're, during the process of developing their, their project, they're, they, they actually use, uh, for, for example, Tsuru. Tsuru is our plat platform as a service that is open source. But you can also use Heroku and, and a, a, AWS to deploy our projects. And later on, we have our products in, in, our project in production. So this is basically the uh, 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 overview of a, a, day in the a day in the life of a development team. So let's imagine that this developer wants to develop, de develop his, his features and try to uh, do his, his commit to the repository. And all uh, tasks are being used in, the, in his CI. So we already have these configurations being made, the build, the iOS, Android, and, and Lint, and the tasks. So later on, we, at global.com, we ask it to another developer to do this manual code review. So to, to check if we, there are some flaws and, 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 and something that was not seen by the, the, this automated test. And if that, that is correct, this, this, this commit is, is merged to master. And we, do, we deploy it to our platform as a service. And later on, the, the project is, is in production. So as a security team, the, this process, we, we see there's something is missing. I mean, I mean no, no security test is being made here. So as, a, as, as some security teams, we see, wow, you are actually coding in Go. Have you ever heard about this, this static analytics called GoStack that is open source? The, it, it's very good, so you, you can add it into your CI so we can find eventually security flaws before deploying it. So the developer actually, the development team actually include this in, in their tests. And this is something that we, we, we as a security team, think that is, the, the, is, is very good. So, so, but later on, another developer that is working in another language, that is Ruby, the same process, we as a security team comes to the team saying, hey, have, have you ever heard about Breakman? That is also an open source tool that do the same thing. And the same process goes. And the team will eventually put that in their CI as well. But, what, what happens if there are a lot of other languages that we do not know? For example, which static analysis tool do, uh, does these developers must use? 
if it, it if she used Java or, or JavaScript. So we as a security team could eventually ask them, hey, what about using mm, a tool that we, we could eventually create that will that developers may abstract and will not have to worry about which security tool he, she or he would eventually try to use. And this is, is what we dream. So this is, would be great if we, we were able to do that. So a day in the life of a bigger organization. As I was saying, we are actually talking about one security as one development team. So global.com is a huge organization. We have a lot of developer teams. So if we try to scale this scenario, we have a lot of development teams. We have a lot of pull requests. We have a lot of commits. And each one uses its own uh, it, uh, its own repository, GitHub, GitLab. So everyone is deploying. Everyone is doing this thing. Unfortunately, our security team can't be inside all of the development teams. So all this commit is being made, is being deployed. And later on, our security team will, will do some tests, some manual tests, some pen tests on, 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 on this project that is already in production. So this is something that is very bad in our perspective, because th there's a lot of, of, of coding involved. So at global.com, we have this project that is called the Hack Day. There is actually my t-shirt that I'm using. That, we, that is, 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 a, is a hackathon that we, we take a day a day or two to do a lot of everything that we know, we want, and this was a great opportunity to us as a security team to try to develop in this security tool. So, what we what would be our dream? We have all these development teams, each one using its own repository. We would eventually add this security tool in in, in every CI. Eventually, some may eventually pass, and some will, will eventually fail, and. For, for those that failed, we will eventually receive this response because we, 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 we can eventually have this emailed and, and, and that is good to us to know what, what, what vulnerability is being found. And for example, for this second development team, it will eventually see, oh, we have found this vulnerability, all right, let's correct it and send another pull request and we will eventually mitigate it. But for some development teams, this may not be so easy. So, by by using this tool, we can eventually put put this this security analyst inside that team to understand that vulnerability. For example, we can't we we, we don't know we do not know how to mitigate this SQL injection. Could you help us? So our security team may eventually be there and try to to help them. And now this deploy can be made. So this is our dream. And later on, our security team will eventually continue doing these pen testings and manual and, and manual testings in our productions. Okay, so what are we coding? At global.com, we code in a lot of languages. So we use a lot of Go lang, we use a lot of Python, you, you use a lot of Ruby, you use a lot of a lot of languages, and this is maybe and this is we eventually meet the, the same scenario as you face every day. And I even challenge you to, to check this slide and see. You, you may eventually miss some language that you work on. And that shows how challenging it is to us, to, to, to security team, to, to handle this. So as we are working in the hack day, we were just trying to focus on these three languages at first. We're trying to use Golang and Python and Ruby. And there are free uh, open source tools that are being done. And this is another important thing. We, we were using open source tool only, so any other, other companies could eventually use this tool as well. So GoSack, Bandit, and Breakwing was our starting security test tools that we eventually do. So how would we build this tool? So we have this development team. It will eventually send this pull request. The CI will, will start all the security tests, and Husky CI will eventually uh, fail if some vulnerability would, would, is found. So we, we are using some so three components here. We use an API, a Docker API, and our database that we are using Mongo. And for example, if we're using this GoLang repository when this pull request is being made, and the Husky CI will receive that request, it will eventually send this request to a Docker API to start a container that will, for the first thing that we'll do, it will use Henry. Henry that is, is actually another uh, open source tool that can check which language are in those repository. If you go to GitHub or GitLab, you, you, you eventually see, oh, this repository is 80% Go and 20% Makefire, for example. This is what Henry do. So 
and he does, sorry. Uh, so, and he will eventually see that that is a Golang, and we'll return it to the Husky CI API and say, hey, this is a Docker, this is a Golang repository. So, what, what are the security tools, the open source tools that we have in Golang that we can eventually try to scan it and find vulnerabilities? The, uh, ev at, at this moment, we, do, we only have GoSec, but as we are building this, this tool, we are actually trying to make it possible so everyone could send plugins, so I, I've got these new security tools in Golang, and so this was will eventually build a lot of containers and try to run all of them, and eventually it failed. So this is the, this is the same process, and, and later on the security team, we eventually see these results that is being stored in our Mongo database. So. What happens if an, another, another language is inside this repository? So now Python is being aided, some scripting Python is being aided in that repository. So the same process will, 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 will flow. And, and he will, will check that now we have both Golang and Python. And later on, we will, we will create two containers or, or more if there are more security tests related to Python in parallel. So we can run all these security tests and later on, if, it, if it, there are vulnerabilities, we will fail with DCI. So this is, this is our dream. And what we would like to see, with what are the metrics that are important to us? The first thing that it would be good to see is the commit author, not to blame the developers or, 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 or nothing like that, just to get, have this metric so we could, for example, if we find that this Top 10 developers are committing a lot of SQL in Jackson. We could eventually get our security team to train them in this specific uh, in this is in this specific vulnerability. So git commit author is something that we think it's good to us to see. The repository language for, for metrics. It's very good. Also the files that were found in that repository, so we can have, for example, in this pull request we have these files. And later on, a new file has come and a new vulnerability was found. So this is something that would be good to us to see. Also the branch name, and the most important to us are the vulnerabilities that, that are being found. So these are, this is an is example of the two. And also the mitigation. So if the, the, the vulnerability was mitigated, is a very important uh, uh, metric to us to see. So this is how our MongoDB looks like. And there, there is these repositories, the containers that, are, that were used, and the results that we're actually trying to, to separate here. Uh, we currently are trying to, to fail the CI when medium and high vulnerabilities are found. So this is, this is something that we start with, and this is how uh, we also are printing it in, in some JSON so that we can consume this this output in, in, other, in, other, in other tools, for example, if we use a front end later on. So I've got a, and this is another thing. So what dev, the developers must do now? The developers must only add, add his configuration in the CI, these simple requests that we will eventually uh, download this client, this Husky CI client, and, and the client will be executed inside the container, and the container will uh, run that container, so we run the security test. So the developers do not need to uh, to, to check which are the security tools that we he, he or she needs to you to use. Husky CI will will do that for for him or her. So I've got a video here to show the the tool working. I've created a uh, an open uh, uh, a repository that is open that is public. And this is a, this, this is the repository that that is in GitLab. I have the reference for the links. And let's check the GitLab CI configuration. We will see that there are a lot of stages that are already being used. And now I'm using this Husky CI that we have built this external environment so we can test. And now we are going to add some vulnerabilities here just to check how the the, the tool works. We are adding some a new function here that get MD5. That is something that there is a vulnerability in Golang that we are using some weak uh, function here. So we're actually checking out, cre creating a new branch to push it. And at this moment, this repository only has uh, one, one, one language, that is Golang. And 
after committing and pushing it into GitLab, all these tests will be will start. And we are not using GoStack, we're using only Husky CI, and Husky CI will be will be able to understand that that repository is a GoLang, and later on we, it will eventually start all the security tests related to Go. So I have edited the video so that we, as we are short in time, so the pipeline has started, and all this security, secu all this pipe, all this pipeline, this pipeline has a lot of jobs, and the last one is Husky CI, and when we click it in our, on Husky CI, we will see it running, and the container will run, and and we'll eventually download the, the Husky CI client and start the analysis. So after a few moments and a few minutes, Husky CI will eventually find those vulnerabilities on the CI that is medium high. We're using a weak cryptography primitive, and it shows the file that, that, that the vulnerability was found. It finds the line of it, the code itself, and, and gives it some summary over there, like, uh, over there so developers could see what's going on. So for GoSec, he, it, it has found some four or three vulnerabilities, and as there are some vulnerabilities that are medium, the, 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 the CI will eventually fail. So that, that is the, the CI failing. So what if a new language is added into the project? As, as I mentioned before, as, what if a, a new script is added? So I'm, adding, I'm creating a new branch here, and I'm, and, and I'm adding this Python script that is using some that has some intended vulnerabilities here, so we can check if it, Husky CI would find that we are storing some hard-coded credentials on it, and eventually calling a function that could cause a remote code execution, for example, that, is, that we consider insecure. So the same process is being done. Now we are committing and pushing it once again to, to GitLab, and let's see what Husky CI will find. And the new pipeline is, is created. And the jobs will be run. I have added the radio so we can check just Husky CI. And the runner will start. Now the Husky CI will eventually see that a new language is being set and it will add and it and it, and it will run all the security tests related to Python. So as we already had the vulnerabilities in GoSec, we still can see them there. And also, as we are using now Python, uh, uh, currently in Python we have two security tests that we use, that is Bandit, that do some static analysis and safety, that checks for vulnerable, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable uh, dependencies. So this is what it, it found. So I want to show you how some statistics that we have in global.com so far. So we have talked to some development teams, so if, if they wanted to have uh, Husky CI in their, in their CI as a beta testers. So as I said, these are some of the products that we, we have in Brazil, in global.com, and some of them are already using Husky CI. And we have a 65 unique repository that was already analyzed and 108 unique branch that was analyzed. So, 20% uh, of the of this of our CI has failed, uh, causing uh, showing us that some vulnerability was found. And uh, 52 passed, and the others just have the developers are still understanding how the, the the tool works and some errors has been found. For example, they forgot to to set their environment uh, variable that Husky CI needs to needs to run, so this is our, our first statistic that we, we have. And the, the, the metrics of the seconds that each security tool takes to, to, to run completely, GoSec takes 14 seconds, Breakman as well. For Python, we have these both security tests that we are running that take this long, seven and 30 seconds. And for JavaScript, we have these two, these two tools. We are NPM, we are using NPM audit that we have built our own containers to do this check. And retire.js is, is another 
security tool that we use. The retired JS takes a little longer because we are we need to do some npm install before using the, the tool. So this process of npm installing is taking a little longer. So and all the process is being taking seven minutes, uh, our average, because a lot of projects use multi languages and eventually all these containers must be created, and this is our average so far. For vulnerabilities, the most most vulnerabilities that we are facing there is some error are not being handled. For example, in GoLang, we, we, we are able to return error when we when you're using a function, and if you do not want to use this error, we would eventually use, uh, uh, use the, <laughs> I forgot the word in English, it's that, uh, dash, I, I guess. And this is some security vulnerability for us, and all the others are vulnerable dependencies. This is the, the top one for all of them in languages. And what are our next steps? As I said, this is an open source tool that everyone could eventually try to use inside your organizations and try to understand how this could help you. So as I said, we are at this moment we at this moment we have these three components and our security team is working on checking all the all this data from our MongoDB and and some feedback that we are having from our developers is that we need to have a front end so everyone could check in in a more more friendly way to see this vulnerability and to collect these metrics. There are already some open source tools that are very uh, are very good to do this. That's our R3 sec and eventually Sonar Cube that we can use it as input it to to use as a front end. So we are, we are we are not using none none of them at this moment, but we could eventually use them. And there are a lot of other languages that we are not facing. Uh, uh, we are not handling at this moment, but it, it would be great if we, we, if we could. And next step is also to contribute to this uh, to this awesome open source tools. Then they are all op op they, are, they are all open source tools that we they are <laughs> being updated daily, and it would be great to us as a Husky CI uh, community also contribute to them and add more security tests. For example, there are so these are some open source tools that could that we could add, and there are some GitHub uh, repositories that have a, a huge list of security tests as uh, of security uh, static analytics tools that can be can be used, and this is something that we have to in mind, and many more. We are trying to open some issues to handle how how uh, how the future of the tool is going. Uh, on, on how we, we could do some more uh, features and, and now and everything. And I would, if you would like to give Husky CI a chance, we are trying to build some documentation so, so it's, it turns, it, so it's easier so to, other, uh, to other companies to use it as well. And as I said, it's open source. These are my references. I'm not sure if I was too fast, but I'm open to questions if anyone has one. Yes. Yes, we are we are scanning each push. If when a when a new push is made, we're we're getting that range and 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 and, and using that commit from until that commit that range, and we clone all those those repositories based on that range. We we do some git clone a single branch and the following branch that we're working on, and later on we start all the security analysis based on on on, on that code. Oh, so, so just, just the entire repo, 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 repo. yeah, it's the entire repo oh. Not sure if that is optimal, but this is something that we're doing at this moment. Yes? Are you running Husky CI as part of a parallelization? With, uh, when it comes down, say you have two tools that you want to run against each other, whereas it's serialized. Yeah. We, we are trying to use some Go routines to start all the containers in parallel and trying to make it possible to scale it so it's easier when a lot of repositories trying to use it, we, it, it it's smoother to our 
uh, environments to run it. So we're using Go routines to start them in parallel, all the security tools. Yes? So like uh, with Python, you're doing safety and bandit. Are you doing those earlier parallel? Par parallel. They're working in parallel. Yes? So you had a lot of examples for GitLab uh, and your CI system. Has there been any thought about what you into using expanding into Jenkins as well for a CI, uh, as a CI platform? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are using a lot of GitLab because we use a lot of GitLab in, in, our, in global.com, but we also use some GitHub and also Secret CI and, and, another, and other CIs. So uh, basically we, wh what we could do is, is just add it you have to build this environment, this CI environment, and put that line inside your container that will be run. So I think it, it would be easier to use in Jenkins than any other CIs. Yes. Yes, nice. Some, some security tools. Uh, permit us to add this the, this comment in the line that we that developer and the security team think that is a false positive. For example, GoSec allows us to put some comment in, you, uh, uh, using no sec, so that GoSec will eventually not consider that as a as a as a as a as a vulnerability. But false positive is some of our challenges, in, because if some developers also uh, ask us how we could not fail that CI if this false positive is is shown. But we are, at this moment, we rely on how the security tools are, 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 are allowing us to, to handle these false positives. So for Bennett we, we, or safety, we need to check if them can allow us to, to add this tool. But it's something that we could eventually do in Husky CI client. We could do some feature to try to allow it, us to not face this problem. <laughs> uh, my question is actually process-oriented. My question is actually process-oriented. Uh, when you started operationalizing uh, the implementation, um, and you said that you started having uh, your uh, AppSec team in bed with engineering teams, mm -hmm. um, did you find that you were able to handle the capacity of, of putting those resources out? And as like a follow-up question, um, was there any? Is there anything you're noticing in terms of do developers run into some of the same problems where you might have uh, the same vulnerability cropping up across your development teams where you send the same person? Or how, how are you resourcing that? Nice. Uh, well. When, when, when we first talked to developers since to, to use this tool, it, it's something like it, it, it's a culture. So each team has its own uh, autonomous uh, way of handling the, the, those repositories. And as, unfortunately, we are not able to be inside all of their, our developer teams, but on, on the, the developers on the developers team that we do have an, uh, a security analyst, we ask we ask them to gently add this sec the security tool in their CI, and and um, our our most problem is is basically finding that the repository using vulnerable dependencies. So this is something that we are trying to do. Developers are 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 are. are, 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 are Sorry, are, are generally saying that those dependencies are from the vendors, not of their project. But we actually see as well, it, it, it is indeed a vulnerability. So you should not use this 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 dependence. So this is something that we're trying to to handle. Uh, I see security more more like a people. So we have to talk with them and try to inc increment in, in, input some security culture inside our team, but this is something that we're trying to, to work on. Yeah. Are you planning on ticketing system integration? ALM, Jira, etc. Uh, uh, currently our, our Husky CI team is, is, is free to and free developers as well, but it's something that we could eventually add in the future, even trying to integrate to, to these tools or ServiceNow and, and, and any other tools. Thank you very much.